All right, so we're actually going to continue on now. We are going to start talking about what these intervals are all about and how do we shrink them down so I don't have 10 intervals just because I have a score of 10. So class intervals or groups is just a way to group or organize the data. Ideally, you should have anywhere between 5 and 10 intervals. Okay, so please make sure you get that down and highlight that part. That's super important. Okay, so let's pause the video, get the rest of this down, and we'll talk about how do we make these intervals. All right, so an interval, again, is just like a number, like 0 through 4, and basically that means any data that is between 0 and 4 uh, gets a tally mark. Okay, and we're going to see an example here in a second, okay? So, for instance, if I had a interval that's 1 through 5, that is going to include all the numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, okay? Now, another thing that's really important about this is that all of my intervals in my frequency table need to have the same width. We measure the width by how many numbers are in the interval. Now, this can kind of get a little confusing sometimes because we're going to look at this interval 0 through 4 and say, well, that has a width of 4. But in reality, it actually has a width of 5 because the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all in that number set. And that's a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 numbers. So the interval from 0 to 4 has a width of 5. Let me show you another example here. Yeah, example here. We got the interval 2 to 4, let's say. Well, how, how wide is that? Let's see here. Well, that has the numbers 2. 3, and 4. So how wide is this? Well, this has a width of 3. Okay, so when we're making our interval column, let me jump back to a problem you guys just saw. Jump back to slide 3 here. Uh, this interval that you guys just saw, let's make all these, this, all these intervals are actually only a width of 1, because this interval right here only has one number in it. But I can actually join these two intervals together and then say, for instance, well, how many numbers are between 1 and 2? Well, I know that there were two ones and then there were two twos, so that makes a total of 4. Okay, so and then, but I can't leave all these other intervals down here like this is one. I can't have a width of two here and then a width of one on all these ones. So all these other ones would have to have a width of two as well. So let's get into an example of that here. Let's see here. There we go. All right, so why do we use these intervals? Well, it's the difference between these two tables here. All right, this is the same data that we just looked at on the last frequency table that we just jumped from. I can have intervals and just say, well, the interval's one, then two, then three, then four, and then make a tally per one, or I can make all my intervals like this over here, one through two, three through four, five through six, seven through eight, nine through ten. You'll notice that all my intervals have the same width. For instance, this first interval has a one and a two in it. The second interval has a three and a four in it. It's not overlapping, right, because this goes one, two, three, four, then five, six, then seven, eight, let me get this out of the way. And then uh, 9, 10. 9, 10. All right, and now I can make a tally as such. So now I see this 8 here. Well, 8's going to go in the interval that has an 8 in it. Then 3. Then 2. Then 7. 9. 6. 4. 10. 10. 876, 876, 10, got three fives here, two, three, a nine, a one, six and an eight, ten and a five, a one and a two, an eight and a four, Eight and a four, a nine and a ten, eight and a seven, eight and a nine, and a ten and a six. All right, so now I've got 
my I mean, my frequencies are a little bit different now because now I'm only looking at five intervals as opposed to ten. I have five intervals of width two to go through my data, and this kind of helps me condense my uh, my frequency table here. Okay, so I have a frequency of four, three, let's see, eight, nine, and ten. All right. Uh, this makes things go a little bit quicker, but ideally 5 to 10 intervals is what I want. So actually I would accept this first frequency table, but this one I think looks a little bit more condensed and a little bit more nice. I actually like to aim for about 5 to 7, but 5 to 10 intervals are accepted. So let's focus just on that interval column, okay? So we have this interval column that I really want to focus on for right now because a lot of students get confused here. So we're going to just kind of remove the rest of the frequency table for a second and then just focus in on the interval column. So I'd like to create an interval uh, width for frequency tables. I want six intervals with a width of five starting at value two. Well, it's not too bad. I'm going to start at the value two. And I want it to have, starting at data value 2, I want it to have a width of 5. So 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 will be how many, all the numbers that are included in my interval. But I don't have to list all of those. 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 can just be listed as 2 dash 6. All the numbers from 2 to 6. And that has a width of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so that's going to be my first interval, 2 through 6. Well, what's the next interval going to start with? The next interval is going to start with the next number. This first interval starts with a 2 and it goes 3, 4, 5, 6. That means this next one has to start with a 7 and then 8, 9, 10, 11. So now I have five numbers here for my next interval, but this one can be written as 7 to 11. And there it is. That's my second interval. And all these intervals are going to have the same width. Well, the next interval is going to start with a 12 and then go up from 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I'm going to go from 12 to 16. I've got five numbers here. That means it makes it a width of five. Make sure, again, the, the hardest part of intervals is making sure all their widths are the same and that we're not overlapping. So you notice I'm not going from 7 to 11 and then 11 to 16, right? I, don't, I want the 11 to only be in this interval, not in this one as well. Otherwise, I'll have some overlapping data. All right, what's the next one going to start with? The next interval is going to start with, well, this one ended in 16, so this one must start in 17 and include five numbers, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. That's five numbers, so from 17 to 21. I don't know if you guys are seeing a pattern yet. I'm going to continue this, and I'm going to show you the pattern. The next interval is going to start with a 22, because this one ends in 21, so 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. So the next interval is going to be 25 through, uh, sorry, 22 through 26. The next interval is going to start with a 27, and a 28, 29, 30, 31. So 27 through 31. Now you might actually notice something here. What's going on between each of these intervals? If you look at it kind of like a table, what is happening as we go from 2 to 7, and then from 7 to 12, and then 12 to 17, and then 17 to 22, and then 22 to 27? You notice something? Well, it's adding the width each time. It's also doing that here on the right. So instead of having to write out all those numbers for the interval, all I really do is have to do is find that first number. In fact, if I go from 2 and I add the 5 to get to 7, that means that this one must end in 6, right? So I don't even, I, mean, I could just sit here and go through here and do add 5 each time after that point, okay? So each interval is just starting with 5 more than the last one. And that helps us fill out interval tables nicely, evenly, and make sure that we keep all the widths the same. All right, well, let's try this one together. I'm, I'm going to have to actually ask you to pause this video and try giving me 
six intervals with a width of 10 this time, starting at the data value 12. So I want to start at 12. If I want to start my first interval at 12, well, I don't know what the next one's going to go to. Instead of writing out a width of 10, I know that the next one's going to start with plus 10, and that's going to be 22, which means that this one must end in 21. So there's my first interval. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can fill in the rest of these intervals. All right. Well, if I keep on doing this add 10, adding my width each time, that means my next interval is going to start with a 32, which means this one ends in a 31. But now I can just see that this is a plus 10 as well. So I don't even need to do that anymore. I can just say, well, that plus 10 is going to be uh, 41 right there. So now I've got three of my intervals. Okay. If you, still, if you think you got it now, go ahead and try to finish this one up and finish the next three intervals by yourself. Pause the video. All right, next up, well, just add, we're going to add 10 here and add 10 here. It's going to give me 32 plus 10 is 42 and 40, uh, 42 and 41 plus 10 is going to be 51. Then again, add 10, add 10. So this is 52 to 61. And then lastly, one more time, add the width 10, add the width 10 again. And that's going to give us 62 to 71. That's how we do the intervals. All right, this one's on you guys. Um, go ahead and give this one a shot. And then if you get it wrong, try to go back through the last two examples and try to figure out what you did wrong on this one. This one says, I want you to create an interval, an interval column with six intervals and a width of 35 this time, so a calculator might be nice. And this time we're going to start at the data value zero. So six intervals a width of 35, starting at data value 0. 6 intervals means 6 rows, width 35 means I'm going to add 35 each time, and starting at data value 0. So again, pause the video, give that a shot. All right, bringing it back now. We know we're going to start at data value 0, and I don't know what that's going to go to, but I do know that I'm going to add 35 right here. And 0 plus 35 is 35, which means that this interval must end at 34. All right, and from there, the rest should come out pretty easily. Okay, 0 to 34. Next one starts at 35, and then we just got to do 34 plus 35, which gives us 69. Then all we have to do is add 35 again. Okay, add 35 on the left here left side of our interval and on the right side of our interval. Gives us 70 to 104. And then again, 70 plus 35 is 105. 104 plus 35 is 139. Adding again, 105 plus 35 is 140. And 139 plus 35 is 174. Lastly, 140 plus 35 is 175, and then 174 plus 35 is 209, and that is the interval. Check that with your work and correct any mistakes you've made in your notes, making a note of the error you made so you can study that, so you don't make those same mistakes over again. And now you should go back through and highlight all those important parts in your notes, summarize them, ask questions, write stuff in the left-hand column. Uh, make, make all those important points knowable in your notes so I can just look at it and see what you're learning. Uh, this is part of our class. All right, then move on to the next uh, question or two in Canvas and finish those up.